How Chislehurst, St Nicholas School, St Nicholas Church, Cooper's Mansion and St Mary's Church have changed in the 41 years up to 2023. It also includes wartime memories of attending St Nicholas School from my dad. In 1982, I was very concerned about the number of old buildings disappearing in Kent, so I photographed a lot of places, including parts of Chislehurst to create a record. I've gone back in 2023 to see what has changed. In this video, we look at two schools and two churches on or near Chislehurst Common. All are listed or locally listed buildings. I've also made two other videos on Chislehurst, one on the railway station, Camden Place and the Prince Imperial Monument, and another on parts of the common, including the Tiger's Head, the Crown Inn, the Bull's Head and the Cockpit. Please take a look. I will try to highlight the changes and provide some history on each of the buildings. I've also added some comments my dad has made about attending St Nicholas School during World War II. Make sure you stay to the end to see what has changed and what has not. I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to get updates as I release them. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images. To provide context, here is the London Borough of Bromley map of conservation areas and listed buildings. And here is the part of Chislehurst we are covering. It is all quite close together. We have St Nicholas's School, followed by St Nicholas's Church, then on to Hawkwood Lane for St Mary's Catholic Church, followed by the Cooper's Mansion. Other points of reference are the Old Workhouse, then Orphanage, and the Crown Public Inn either side of St Nicholas's School, and the Tiger's Head Pub at the start of Hawkwood Lane. Starting with the school, St Nicholas, located between the Crown Inn pub and moving round past the play area called the pit, we come to the old workhouse, later the orphanage. Coming back to the school, I photographed this building in 1982 as my dad had gone there in 1942 whilst being moved around during the war. Back in 1982, the building seemed very old for a school and I wasn't sure if it would survive. In fact, there are several other schools in the borough with a similar Victorian look that I had photographed in 1982 that have all since been converted for other uses. These include Farnborough School, seen here. Coming back to the school history, I have these wonderful recollections from my dad. He attended the school after coming home after being evacuated. There was no school lunch, so you had to go home and come back at lunchtime. The school uniform was yellow and black, and he had to wear a cap and a tie. And the headmaster, Mr Jenkins, sold them from the school premises. Shorts were always worn, and socks were held up with garters. Mr Jenkins was a fair disciplinarian and did not make excessive use of the cane. He also lived on the premises. He does not recall an air raid shelter at the school, but does recall playtime in the pit with the grass and trees all around. Very unusual, especially when compared to London schools. Even more unusual is that the pit is still used today and the children have the opportunity to play on grass surrounded by trees in a London borough. Wartime changed all the rules. He remembers a Miss Cross who got married before the war, she would have been required to give up work on getting married, but because of the war, she was allowed to keep on working. A bit of non-family history. The school dates back to 1835 and took children from the workhouse and then the orphanage, as well as local children. The school and orphanage buildings are locally listed. If we zoom in on the 1982 picture, we can just make out the old standard London Borough of Bromley school sign that was predominantly blue with a school name on and a white band at the bottom. We will actually see another one when we're looking at the Coopers building. Looking at the 1982 and 2023 pictures, the front and side of the school, there has been virtually no change, apart from the brickwork may have been cleaned and the windows have had some attention. Looking at the back of the building though, there have been some additions. The fire escape was not there in 1982, nor were these windows in the roof 
nor the notice boards. Also, this outbuilding has had a roof with windows added. If we look back in 1982, we can see the difference. Though, again, for an active school, it's not a huge amount. Moving across the common to St Nicholas's Church, this is the oldest building we are covering. It is a Grade 2 star listed building, first listed in 1954. According to Historic England's website, it dates from about 1460, but incorporates earlier work and probably goes back a lot further. It has been restored several times, which is normal for a building of this age, but what we see today is mainly how it was finished in 1896. I remember it dominating the common as it stands out over the whole area. This is actually a picture taken from the bottom of the cockpit and it can still be easily seen. The graveyard contains several notable people, including William Willett, who proposed British Summertime, and who has a memorial in Pets Wood, as seen here. Looking at these two pictures taken from the tiger's head side, there is virtually no change. Even the fence that looks like it was repaired in 1982 looks the same now. Moving past the tiger's head and onto Hawkwood Lane, we come to two very different but connected buildings. This is Cooper's from the outside with a prominent boundary wall, then round to St Mary's Catholic Church. The church was built in 1854 by the then Catholic owners of Cooper's, The Connection. It is a Grade 2 listed building, first listed in 1973. The main point of interest for this church was the funeral of the ex-head of state of France, Napoleon III, which was held here in 1873, after he had been exiled to Chislehurst and was living in Camden Place across the common. He was buried here because his family were Catholics and this was the nearest Catholic church to where they were living. The Empress Eugenie, Napoleon III's wife, in 1874 had a mortuary chapel in a French Gothic style added to the church to contain the Emperor's sarcophagus. The Prince Imperial, Napoleon III's son, who has a memorial on Chislehurst Common, also had his funeral here in 1879. Both bodies were later moved to Hampshire in 1889 by the Empress. Comparing 1982 with 2023, looking at the building itself, the only change I can really see is that there is now a cross on the roof at the front, whereas in 1982 there was not. I am guessing that the original cross had fallen off sometime before 1982. The only other changes are fencing and signage, with both being simpler in 2023. Moving just a little way down the lane to Cooper's, the old building or mansion house. It has been used as a school, or part of a school, since 1939. The school was initially a girls one and it wasn't until 1969 it became known as Cooper's, named after the mansion. As an aside, in the same year, 1969, the school also admitted boys for the first time. Looking at the 1982 photo, and starting on the left, we can see some metal gates. This is the entry point to the Marjorie McClure Special School that shares the grounds with Coopers. As we move further round, we also see the old London Borough of Bromley school sign with blue at the top and a white band at the bottom. We saw the same format at St Nicholas earlier in the video. This is the signage on the wall today for both schools. It is a lot more detailed and even has the school badge. Moving a bit further along, we can see the building itself. Cooper's, named after the person who built it, Francis Cooper. According to Historic England's website, it was first listed in 1954 as a Grade II listed building. The earliest portion is the other side of the building to this photo and is late 18th century, and the side we see here is 19th century. As an aside, the listing is very out of date as it starts with now a girls school, which it hasn't been since 1969. My guess is the wording was what was originally written in 1954. Looking at the building itself, the main issue is visibility. In 1982, the building was a lot more visible from the lane, but now the trees are matured, 
it is a lot harder to actually see it. The building was refurbished in 2013. Bailey Garner worked with the school on the project and these are the pictures on their website showing the restored building, both on the school side with the red brick and the road side. The Chislehurst Society was so pleased with the restoration, they presented a plaque to the school. Moving further on on the 1982 picture, we see a white tin or corrugated iron building that was the library. It has now been replaced by a new building. Numerous people have attended the schools and churches over the long history of this area. And what is quite remarkable, with the exception of signage, fencing and tree height, from the outside there has been hardly any change at all between 1982 and 2023 and in all likelihood for a long, long time before that. My dad instantly recognised the pictures of the school and the pit and that was a memory from the 1940s which really demonstrates how little the area has changed. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There are links at the end to other then and now videos. I'll be making more similar ones so please subscribe to the channel, click the alerts bell and add comments, especially with any additional information. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience, change seen through images.